Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Jessica. Welcome to my Chicago home. Come on in and let me show you around. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, welcome to my home. My name is Jessica Lagrange. I'm an interior designer for over 30 years, based in Chicago. Um, I live in a beautiful 1930s Art Deco co-op building in the Gold Coast area of Chicago. We're about a block from Lake Michigan, and um, I feel very, very fortunate to live in such a beautiful area and have a beautiful apartment. What I love about this building um, is that it is one apartment per floor, so it feels very much like a home. Um, I believe there are 12 stories. There's one apartment per floor. It's about 4,000 square feet. Um, some lucky residents are um, lucky enough to have two floors. We just have one floor. It is a three-bedroom apartment, a very spacious living room, dining room, library, and a, a beautiful entrance foyer. I think what's unique about the apartment is the circular floor plan. It's very gracious and um, it's not typical of the sh typical Chicago apartments where you see long railroad apartments. Um, the architect designed that on purpose so it allows light on all sides of the, all sides of the um, apartment. As you exit the elevator into our apartment, you are greeted into this small little elevator vestibule. It's one apartment per floor, so the elevator opens directly into our unit. Um, I think what makes this elevator vestibule special is the technique that I used on the walls and the ceiling. It's called ver Um, It's a very old technique of gold or silver leaf behind glass. And I've used it on the ceiling and on the walls. We've pieced it. Um, but I think what makes this Vera Eglomise so successful is it has little drawings incorporated into it. And it goes back to my jungle flora and fauna theme that came out during my design process. There are little drawings of oh, leopards and antelopes and palm trees. And um, it's just a beautiful technique. It was from a company called Gorman Studios out of Vancouver. And we worked with him to come up with a complete design. This is actually the service elevator. We created a jib door, so it covers the service elevator, but yet the whole room looks like it's paneled. I even did it on the ceiling. But I think to walk into this very dark, sexy space um, creates a huge impact. As we enter into the foyer, we design two beautiful um, metal and bronze doors that are reminiscent of the doors at the entrance of the building. Um, some parts and pieces of this original apartment were missing, but I felt it was my duty to kind of bring it back to what I thought it may have been back at the time. We even found these beautiful Art Deco um, bronze door handles on a salvage website based in London, so we incorporated those into the design. We had a machine shop here in Chicago make these. Um, as you enter our foyer, you have the beautiful terrazzo floor. I added the little um, brass cabochon. Um, I felt the floor needed a little bit more zip to it, so gave it a little bit more glamour. Beautiful vaulted ceiling. Um, one of my great finds was these beautiful Fortuny fixtures. Um, at one time back in the day, Restoration Hardware was representing or selling Fortuny fixtures, so this was a great, a great uh, find that looked beautiful in here. Um, collected some beautiful antique furniture. I love the little settee we have here with the green and black animal print, the abstract collage above. Um, again, I think what makes this room successful is this series of different periods and styles. Um, I think what is really great about this foyer is the little bar we have as you walk in. I've upholstered the bar in a beautiful purpley burgundy leather with studs. Um, it feels great right when you enter someone's house to be offered a drink. I've even collected some beautiful barware with all my crazy collections from live auctioneers and all sorts of different places. And um, it just represents everything about me and what we like to do and um, makes this foyer feel like its own space. Some of the favorite barware I've collected are um, a little oil can so you can have the perfect amount of vermouth in your martini. 
Um, I even found a sterling silver syringe <laughs> to put vermouth in, again, for your martinis. Um, we love to have some stirs. I'm a big collector of Elsa Peretti. This is one of her beautiful martini glasses that she designed back in the day. And I think it's so much fun to put it all together. My favorite coasters are the Mrs. Strong's um, paper coasters that says, this is your last drink. <laughs> Very successful towards the end of a party to pass these out. And on the other side here, we have some vintage barware at the top. And my favorite glassware, um, I had little bugs engraved on all the different stemware. So every stemware has a little bug on it. Um, but again, more vintage barware over here, and I just think it looks fabulous all together. The building that I live in was designed by a prominent Chicago architect, Philip Maher. Um, his father was an architect, George Maher, and they were quite well known in the city of Chicago and the surrounding suburbs. Um, George, um, the father, designed a lot of prairie style buildings. His son um, took over the practice and um, designed a lot more classical style buildings, a little bit art deco. Um, this was in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. Um, the building that we live in in the Gold Coast um, was designed in 1929, and shortly after that, he designed another building, I'll call it um, a sister building, very similar in style, um, directly across the street. Um, they're very uh, beautiful and prominent buildings in the city of Chicago. Philip also designed the Women's Athletic Club about the same period on Michigan Avenue. And when I was renovating this apartment, I took a lot of cues uh, from the Women's Athletic Club and incorporated them here um, in our home. This is a unique building. Um, the woman that sold the properties to the developers back in the 1920s, um, I honestly can't remember her name, but um, she said, I wanna live on the fourth floor and I want a particular layout. So this apartment is unique to this building. Um, I think the woman that lived in this apartment wanted to be at treetop level. We are a block from the lake, so we have some views of the lake. We have the views of the treetops. Uh, we have a beautiful park across the street. So it's, it's just perfect. I have a sense of what's down below, but I also have some beautiful views. I think what's really beautiful is to see all the, the leaves that change through the seasons, um, see the bare trees, the trees just blossoming. It's, it's the perfect apartment. I couldn't be happier here. Welcome to the living room. Um, another favorite room in my house. As you can see, I've decorated it with a lot of uh, neutral colors. Um, I think the views from this space are incredible with the park across the street. One of my favorite pieces in my living room is the spider web designed by Ann Carrington. It consists of bugs and um, spiders, and there's even coins incorporated in here and safety pins. She's an artist from the UK, and I'm very inspired by her work. So we had it specially designed above the fireplace. Speaking of the fireplace, um, there was a very insignificant fireplace here. So we had a new one designed. It's cast glass. It felt very appropriate, kind of from the 40s. Um, David Adler, a well-known architect that did a lot of work here in the Chicago area, used a lot of cast glass in his room, so it felt appropriate to be using it in this living room. It has some silver leaf behind it, so it lets off a beautiful, beautiful glow. Um, another one of my favorite pieces is an Eric Schmidt, who's a um, well-known sculptor, and I found this in New York City many, many years ago. So it's gone with me to several homes, but I think it's found a beautiful place in front of the fireplace and everyone loves sitting here. It's actually a very comfortable chair. We have two seating groups in this living room. We've created one um, by the fireplace where I've done two coffee tables, a little bit more contemporary and beautiful rosewood. Um, simple cubes um, designed for the space. And then as you go across to the other seating group, I have a beautiful vintage of uh, Kelvin and Philip Laverne coffee table that has a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful organic shape with some drawings on top of it. So I think they play nicely off each other. It was a great exercise for me to design my own apartment in the last few years. Um, I think I'm in a different place in my life now. It was interesting to see things come out in my style that I wasn't that familiar with. Um, I was attracted to, I'll just say, flora and fauna. Um, as I say to people that come to my home, welcome to my jungle. There was an underlying um, theme that came out during this process of flora, fauna, 
bugs, um, all sorts of things. And you'll see that when I give you a tour of the apartment. And I have to say my style is very eclectic. I love to collect things. Um, it's always a work in progress. It's never finished and it only gets better the longer I stay here. So I've really enjoyed this process. I think designing for yourself is one of the hardest things. Um, it's much easier to design for a client, um, but this has been really, really fun and enlightening. I think what brings me the greatest joy coming into my home is seeing all the things I've collected, back to collections again. It brings back memories. I love looking at my photographs. I love looking at um, the art I've collected. It's, it all has a purpose to me and it all has a history. So that to me gives me the greatest joy. One of the other favorite pieces that I found during this design process um, in New York at the uh, 200 Lex Design Center was this beautiful secretary designed, I think, about 1950s by Piero Fornasetti. If you're not familiar with Fornasetti, he is an Italian designer and artist from Milan. He did a lot of furniture, objects, and went in and out of style, but... Um, when I found this piece, he was very much in style. So <laughs> um, it's beautifully lit. Um, it's black and white, beautiful architectural drawings on it. And I put some of my favorite collectibles. Um, as I'd mentioned before, I love collecting Elsa Pretty objects. And these are a collection of my Elsa Pretty objects. And again, just some of my favorite things. One of the earlier selections that I made in the design process was this beautiful rug by Christopher Farr. It is silk and um, has a beautiful serpentine, um, actually several serpentines that wrap around the outside of the room that we had specially designed. And I think what's beautiful is the pomegranate at the, um, in, in the snake's mouth at the end of the rug. And you'll see that we planned it exactly to work with the floor plan. I think what makes this room successful and in many of the projects that we do is combining different periods and different styles of furniture. Um, to the right here, we have a beautiful John Saladino sofa that was designed in the 70s that is still current today. Um, I have some vintage Art Deco chairs, again, another period and another style. We've also incorporated some beautiful upholstery pieces from Roman Thomas, Madeline Stewart. So I think it's a series of, or it's a combination of many different styles that makes this room look comfortable and collected. I have an interesting journey the way I started um, my career in interior design. I went off to college for a couple of years, not knowing what I wanted to do. I um, came back home thinking, what is, what is my path? Where am I gonna go? Um, I was lucky enough to have somebody connect me with the um, great firm Skidmore, Owings & Merrill, and they hired me as an intern. Um, I had no experience, you know, it was just somebody that opened the door for me. Um, I think that's so important for me to do to other people and to give back in that way. So that set me on my career path. After that, I decided I need to go back to get an education in this. I think it's super important to have um, some type of education, whether it's a two-year degree or a four-year degree in design. Um, I graduated from the School of the Art Institute here in Chicago. And again, was able to get some internships at another architectural firm and then I started off on my own path. It was interesting, I started out doing commercial work, but I was having some of my commercial clients ask me to work on their homes. And at first I turned it down. I really thought residential design was not my forte. But again, somebody gave me the opportunity, someone opened the door for me, and I helped them do their home, and one job led to another. Um, another one was somebody I was carpooling with when I had my children. You know, could I help her with some draperies? And I'm like, I really don't do draperies. I do offices. And um, one thing led to another, led to another. It's my best client ever, and I've done three or four homes for them. And um, started my own firm, Jessica Lagrange Interiors, about 25 years ago. Started by myself, and it's grown. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of it. And it's a rewarding, exciting career. Every day is different. I've now entered my dining room. Again, one of the earlier pieces to this puzzle was this beautiful, beautiful Zubair Grisai wall covering. Um, again, specially designed for the room. Um, we had it all laid out based on ceiling heights and openings. And I just love the colors. It's all in naturals and grays. And if you look closely, there's even some beautiful gold detailing. So it feels very understated, but yet there's an elegance to it. 
Um, another, I think, highlight of this room is the beautiful Hervé van der Straten chandelier. And I love the play between the very traditional wall covering and the more contemporary lighting in this space. I think they play off wonderfully from each other. I feel a home is always a work in progress. I'd been searching recently for um, some chairs to put on either side of my buffet, and I just found some a couple of weeks ago. These are beautiful 19, I think 40s, maybe 50s, Aldo Turo vintage chairs um, done in a beautiful dark parchment with um, a shearling seat. I think, again, they add a special detail and make the room look very collected. Another great find on live auctioneers is this beautiful Jacques Annette bar cart. Um, has some nice leather detailing that is a signature of his work and um, got to have a bar in every room. So <laughs> we added one to the dining room for after dinner drinks. We have beautiful double doors into our dining room and I love to keep them closed and be able to open them right before we serve dinner. Have all the candles lit, all the flowers, all the beautiful um, china that I have and glassware and why not use it all the time? Don't save it for special occasions, but bring it out and it's fun to set a fabulous table and I think your guests really appreciate the effort. I love the beautiful gold vases. They're nothing special, um, but they are um, fun to accessorize with. Um, I use, usually just have some odd floral. You can be very loose with it. Right now I have some eucalyptus in there, um, but I like to keep it low and not just have one big centerpiece. So it's fun to play around with this. Also the candlesticks are I've had for years and very collectible. And again, just to scatter them down the table makes things feel a little bit more casual, I think. And every, everyone looks good in candlelight, so we need a lot of candlelight, especially at our age. <laughs> it's obviously become apparent I'm a collector, and one of the things I started collecting early on were silver boxes. Back in the day, I used to go to flea markets, and they weren't expensive. Um, they've gotten more expensive, but luckily, I'm, I think I maxed out with my silver box collection. I think they look beautiful displayed all together. This is one of my favorite silver boxes because it's a box on top of a box, which I'd never seen before, so that one was unique. I think what's unique, too, are the ones that all have initials or um, things written on them. So again, maybe not my history, but somebody's history, and it's nice to be able to incorporate them in my life. I started collecting um, back when I was in my early teens. I think my mother always loved going to flea markets, garage sales, etc. so it's kind of part of my personality. Lately, um, it's amazing the things that you find online. I think one of my biggest secrets, and I'm not sure it's a secret, is a website called Live Auctioneers. It's better than any flea market, better than any antique show that I've been to. And for those of you that are listening, if you don't know what it is, look up Live Auctioneers. It consolidates all the auctions from across not only the US but the world. And you can find things for $25 and $25,000. And it's, it's an obsession of mine. A lot of the things I've found in my apartment have come from live auctioneers. I've gone off a little, little bit off the deep end a few times, and <laughs> things have arrived a little bit larger, or smaller, or more, more than I expected, but it's really fun, and there are many, many bargains to be had. This is the original layout of the kitchen. We were lucky when we bought this apartment that the cabinetry was all here in place, but it was kind of a boring white kitchen, so we decided to hip it up a little bit. I, painted all the cabinets a high gloss black lacquer. We changed the stone to Calcutta Violette, and we put in a new hood, specially designed the hood, and uh, it gave it kind of a new life without having to replace all the cabinetry. Beautiful unlacquered brass, industrial style hardware, nice and chunky. Um, appliances were all here, so we just kind of gave it a mini facelift. Some of the other things I've collected over the years are um, trophies. Again, going back to my flea market days, nobody wanted trophies. So I have a large collection of trophies here, um, as well as another house we have. And um, those are fun collecting, as well as bud vases. I was collecting bud vases over the years. Again, nobody wanted bud vases, but I've got a great collection of them now. So it's a hodgepodge of everything in here, um, but it all means a lot to me. This is our library. I think it's one of the most used rooms in the home. Um, behind the cabinetry, we have a big screen TV, so of course everyone hangs out in here. Um, what was difficult about this room was the paneling was here, 
when we bought the apartment, but it was a very orangey pine, um, kind of 1980s looking paneling. So what I did was bleach the paneling, wire brush it and restain it. And I think we gave it a really pretty brownish gray color that felt um, a little bit more updated than what was here. Um, we also opened um, up the library to the living room. So you have a beautiful view into the living room and into the dining room. Again, I think what makes a house a home is the collection of books. And my partner is a serious reader, as am I, and uh, lots of books. Um, I've been a collector of the beautiful um, Abercrombie and Fitch, um, beautiful leather footstools over the years. And my collection keeps growing. I've got a elephant and a kitty cat and a hippopotamus and again add some personality to the space. Um, we have beautiful um, drawings that I collected on either side of the, the window by Sonia Delaunay that bring a little color to the space. This room has more color than the other rooms. I've used green in here. My partner adores green so he got his green in here and um, the little paintings I think really add a pop of color as do the green sewn chairs. And I think the green and black look fabulous together. Beautiful kind of decoy looking rug by Galbraith and Paul and a beautiful parchment coffee table by Metaliano. A lot of my favorite vendors that we use for all our clients. Before you walk into the powder room, I found a beautiful mirror on first dibs um, by Poilerat. And I just think it really is a sensational piece and I feel very fortunate to have it. And um, luckily it fit perfectly between the front hall closet and the powder room entrance. I think as a designer, one of the favorite areas I like to um, design are powder rooms. You can be really bold and outrageous because it's a contained space. So, I did the same here. Um, I've always been obsessed with marbleized papers. There's a wonderful artist um, in the States here that will customize marbleized papers for you. And we came up with a series of paint colors and she did about five or six different papers for us. And then we patched work them in this room. So um, they're all um, different sizes and shapes. I think I drove the wall covering um, installer a little crazy, but we even put it on the ceiling and I just think it makes for a very eclectic space. One of the other highlights in here are the sconces um, on either side of the mirror. Um, they are um, a mermaid and a merman. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a merman, but um, they hold um, the beautiful lights in the room and every home needs a little bit of a Nero Porturo stone. The black with the gold veining is the vanity here. And um, again, another favorite space. It's really fun to be able to design for yourself. I think what gives a home its soul is its contents. Um, whenever I work with a client, I'm like, what do you collect? What are your favorite things? Show me the books you read. Um, let me look at your closet. Um, it, there's so many clues to what people are when you see their belongings. And when I go on vacation, I love to collect things. I love to... Um, find things. I love books. I once had a client who had no books. I'm like, how can you not have any books? A books kind of describe a person's personality. Are they fashion books? Are they mystery books? Are they um, history books? And that's what gives an apartment its soul, its belongings, its contents. And you see it here everywhere. <laughs> this is our primary bedroom. The inspiration for my primary bedroom was the beautiful Chelsea textiles drapery fabric that I had been eyeing for years. And um, again, it is a embroidered fabric with bugs that are jeweled and beautiful gold threads. And I think this was, I know this was the inspiration for my master bedroom. I felt so fortunate to be able to use it in this space. So again, I'm drawn to more neutral color palettes, but was able to incorporate a little color in here. Um, I wanted to use a screen behind my bed, so we found this beautiful Rebelli embroidered fabric that I had designed into a beautiful screen. Another find of mine that I just love is the beautiful um, Maison Charles light fixture on the ceiling. Um, again, a little glamorous, but comfortable. Um, the Rosemary Hallgarten silk rug is just, I love that it leaves all the footprints and um, shimmers a little bit. 
um, I don't know, I just find it really inviting. And I work in here as well. Um, when I'm working from home, a beautiful secretary that I've accessorized with some beautiful antique books and some things that I've collected over the years. And um, I just find it very, very inviting and comfortable in here. Another favorite piece I'd wished for for years was this beautiful Merritt Oppenheim ostrich leg table. And um, again, found it on first dibs and couldn't wait to use it. Again, I'm going back to my <laughs> flora, fauna, and animal obsession. And uh, I just think it's so sculptural and so classic. So again, pieces that are more traditional with pieces that are more contemporary, things that just never go out of style. They're classic. Um, another favorite piece that I found on live auctioneers is this kind of 1940s antique mirrored sideboard. And uh, it just fit in here perfectly. As far as the reason to put the screen behind the, the bed was, um, I didn't want the bed to be the center or the focus of the room. Um, I'd look for some artwork, couldn't really find any artwork that I was excited about, but I did fall in love with this fabric. I think the best way to incorporate this fabric was to have a screen designed um, using the fabric. I think it has since been discontinued from Rubelli, but again, it incorporated all my favorite colors and it is like a piece of artwork. Um, starting with my first trip to Italy, I'd say maybe about 40 years ago, um, I was lucky enough to buy a beautiful, and I'm not sure which one it is, sterling silver seashell. And again, over the years, I have found more and more and more. And I think they look beautiful, all masked and grouped together. And uh, you can never have enough beautiful seashells. This is our master bath. Again, I was fortunate when I purchased the apartment that all of the millwork was here. Um, it was a great layout, two separate vanities, a dressing table in the center. But what we did do was replace um, all the stone. Um, I used a beautiful Calcutta stone and I did a beautiful inlay by Waterworks. Um, again, collected beautiful silver, um, beautiful Venetian glass chandelier, and I created this nook for the tub area with the beautiful antique mirror. I love the sconces that I found in the Marche du Pousse in Paris, um, Murano glass ginkgo leaves, which I think are a showstopper. And uh, of course, heated the floor, which makes all the difference in the world. But it's a joy to have so much natural light in here, view the treetops, and um, put on your makeup. I also found this beautiful grotto chair in Palm Beach, and I feel it fits in here perfectly. This is one of two guest bedrooms in our home. Um, we have older children that come to visit, so um, we like to keep bedrooms waiting for them. Um, we call this the red room. I wouldn't exactly call it red. It's more of a cinnabar color. Um, it was a beautiful wall covering that kind of set the tone for this room that I found from Gregorius Pinio. And I think the other inspiration for this room was this beautiful Moroccan rug. You often think of Moroccan rugs as being more beige and brown, but this one had beautiful, soft, muted colors in it and worked really well with the wallpaper. When we moved in here originally, there was not any millwork, so I added the bookcases to the room. This was the bed that I had that we repurposed in this room. I think one of the little features that I did are the little reading lights that are on either side of the bed for our guests. Um, love these little high intensity lights. Um, but I think this room really got the overflow of all my collections <laughs> from our previous homes. So um, again, a hodgepodge. One of my favorite collections are these beautiful African passport masks that I have scattered throughout the house. Um, traveled a lot and came across beautiful little crosses um, from many different countries. So they're up here on the walls. Um, funky little folk art leg. <laughs> um, just a little bit of everything in here. So it brings back lots and lots of memories. Um, my younger son, Remy, loves to stay in here. He finds it really welcoming. And again, I'm gonna reference that we've got a Hans Wegner, you know, 1950s, 60s Papa Bear chair here with an African stool. Um, it's just, again, a, a collection. It looks like it's been here forever and a lot of it has been here forever. Um, one thing that I started collecting early on are these beautiful cashmere paisley shawls. You can see pieces of them on the bed and I have them stacked here at the end of the bed. And I think I have enough now, I don't need any more, but they're fun to use as um, tablecloths or on the bar. 
And uh, again, I love the colors. I think those were also an inspiration for the color in this room. Um, we have a great collection on the wall across from me of vintage um, wax seals. Again, the same reddish colors. Um, they are framed by the beautiful Fortuny draperies. And again, um, all my favorite things. I was lucky to able, I was lucky to be able to incorporate all my favorite things into this home. With my love of Paisley, I even um, unexpectedly put it on the Hans Wegner chair. Usually you'll see this in a solid color fabric or a boucle, but I was a little bold. It's actually an Etro fabric. Etro does a lot of great Paisleys. It wasn't a vintage piece, but um, Again, it's unexpected and I love it. I think growing up as a child, my mother had one Paisley shawl. I've taken it to extremes, but um, don't know what I'm gonna do with all of them, but I just love looking at them. They bring me such joy and um, beautiful colors. What does home mean to me? Home means somewhere I can feel comfortable, I can relax, it feels like my own space, it feels welcoming, it feels warm, um, somewhere where I can just let go. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.